The mandatory mask order was issued. Workers complained that they were too uncomfortable to wear all day. Others said the government had no right to order them to wear anything. A local woman said an authority higher than the Denver Department of Health was looking after her well-being. This was the response of the mask order of 1918 because of the Spanish flu pandemic. Sounds awfully familiar, doesn't it? Dr. Alex Navarro is considered the expert in the U.S. on that 1918 pandemic. He is with the Center of the History of Medicine at the University of Michigan. In an exhaustive interview, Dr. Navarro told me that Denver's response to that pandemic offers some useful but troubling insight into this current one. Okay, the year's 1918. World War I is raging in Europe, the Spanish flu pandemic raging across the globe. There were these Red Cross posters everywhere with tips for not getting sick. Cover your mouth when you cough and sneeze. Do not visit poorly ventilated places. Stay at home if you have a cold. Sounds awfully familiar, doesn't it? Following the health guidance of the day, schools in Colorado were closed. Denver Mayor William Fitz Randolph Mills ordered businesses to shut down and banned public gatherings. Well, America was in the throes of wartime patriotism, so Coloradans embraced the inconvenience and they hunkered down for the greater good. And then they got sick of it. After two weeks of lockdown, the record numbers of new flu cases in Denver leveled off. Since things were getting better, well, the people no longer saw the point of staying inside and not working. Business owners no longer saw the point of losing money, and they all started complaining. In fact, so loudly that Denver's mayor and health officer gave in and declared the lockdown would be lifted November 11th. That turned out to be a really bad idea. November 11th, 1918, ring a bell? Armistice Day, the end of World War I. On November 11th, Thousands of people joyfully crammed Denver streets and hotels and theaters to celebrate the end of the war and the end of the flu. But the flu wasn't over, and the surge in new cases came fast and deadly. Denver was soon seeing hundreds of new cases a day and dozens of deaths each day. And in response, Mayor Mills ordered another shutdown, and this time mandatory face masks. But Denver couldn't stomach another lockdown. Protests from business owners were so fierce, the mayor folded and allowed businesses to reopen. Protests over wearing masks were so fierce, the mayor rescinded that order too, only recommending people wear them in public. Mayor Mills was quoted as saying, quote, it would take half the population to make the other half wear a mask. And so for months, the Spanish flu tore through Denver with no health orders in place to slow its spread other than quarantine for those known to be sick. And the result? Denver suffered one of the highest per capita death rates in the U.S. Only five cities fared worse. When all was said and done, 1,828 people in Denver died from the Spanish flu. 8,000 Coloradans died. 675,000 Americans and 40 million people worldwide. The deadliest public health event in recorded history. Now the spread of that disease could have been slowed. Dr. Navarro cites entrenched ideals of individual freedom, lack of cohesive messaging, and leadership on mask wearing, and misinformation as the obstacles. Now, is he talking about then or now?